decks that don't uh, they don't help each other out in the same deck. Right. Um, so Tim decided it, he would try it in Rug, and he was very happy with it. Uh, so here we are. Edgar Flores on the left, Tim Landell on the right. Flores on his typical blue-white call blade with just some slight modifications with new Phyrexia cards, including like Batter Skull. Um, not even sure sure what else. Probably spell skites in the board. If if uh, Flores, else. yeah, I'm guessing. I can imagine he has yeah. it in the board. Uh, Landale, obviously uh, on the play here, he's with an island and I believe a preordain on turn one, and then turn uh, Edgar goes with a sea chrome coast. Landale goes turn two preordain. Uh, which is spell pierced, I think, and a third preordain from Landale. Is that three preordains in this graveyard? Can we confirm that, uh, Rashad? No, it's a spell pierce. Yeah, oh, did he spell pierce back? He spell pierce back. That's what it is. Never yep. mind, Rashad. Good call. Yeah, I couldn't see it. Now I can. I can see it. So, Flores on the turn two Stone Forge Mystic. Anybody just joining us? I'm Joey Pasco here with Big Head Joe. We're watching the. The semifinals of some uh, Orlando magic here, the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I have to keep referencing Orlando magic, sorry. Uh, <laughs> if, if I were from Orlando, I think I would not be doing that very often, because I'm sure Orlando yes. players are sick of Orlando magic references, but yes. hey, I'm not. I'm, I'm having a blast. postseason performance, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, uh, Flores playing his classic blue-white call blade, tutors up a sort of feast and famine with his Stoneforge Mystic there on turn two. Landale now taking his uh, third turn. Flores just won't let it go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now this is an interesting question from Twitter. Players, you uh, actually, you don't. I don't see it on your screen. Register for the I'll wait till the announcement. Register for the first draft open of the day. Come on up and see Sarah. So, uh... Yeah, somebody asked, uh, do we think that Edgar kept certain New Frixia cards out of his deck because he didn't have them foiled? And that is a decent question. I'm sure, yeah. when, uh, you know, besides you know, beyond the, some people just want their deck fully pimped or it's unacceptable, you know, there is the, like, sometimes the cards feel a little different, you know, and, like... Oh, you're actually say, taking that seriously. <laughs> yeah, no, I see I what actually, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Landale, I mean, speaking of foils, Landale adds a foiled Jace versus Chandra, Jace Bellerin, uh, the Japanese Jace versus Chandra, Jace Bellerin, to the battlefield. Plus twos it, so it's on five counters. At least that's what it looks like. Both players drawing a card. He's just going to deck him here? Yeah, I think that's his plan. Says, you think I'm Rug? You think I'm Splinter Twin? I'm going to deck you with Jace Bellerin. Hmm. That, that hasn't happened to you in a while, has it? Yeah. <laughs> Surprise, Turbo Fog. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if Edgar was playing when Turbo Fog goes out. Yeah, you're probably right. But so yeah. uh, Edgar adds a Celestial Colonnade to the board, passes back. Tim now going to draw some cards. Edgar obviously prepping to violin the uh, the sword of feast and famine, but holding up mana just in case Tim threatens to do something uh, that Edgar doesn't like. Has the uh, has the mana leak or spell pierce mana open? Mm-hmm. And Tim is going to tap out for something here. Hopefully not splinter. There we go. Oracle of Moldiah. <laughs> Oracle of Moldiah. I mean that's a. Uh, that's a reasonable threat in the rug deck, and there's only one in there, um, so that's it. Uh, Landell resolves Oracle of Maldaya, sees land land on top of his deck, um, one of which is the Halimar Depths. He plays Halimar Depths and gets to look at the top three. Yeah, so Edgar representing Mana Leak, uh, I think. I would have countered the uh, the Oracle, so I have a feeling Edgar doesn't have the Mana Leak. Yeah. But he, he could, I'm, I could be wrong. There's the uh, Vildin Sword of Feast and Famine. So, on board now, 
Edgar Flores with uh, an Inkmoth Nexus, a Sea Chrome Coast, and a Celestial Colonnade for his lands, all untapped. He adds a Plains to that suite of, uh, of lands. Uh, a Stoneforge Mystic, and a, an unequipped Sword of Feast and Famine. On Tim Landale's side of the board, we've got a Japanese Jace versus Chandra, Jace Bellerin, a uh, Oracle of Maldaya freshly cast, and five tapped lands with a copper line gorge on the top of Landale's library. I'm surprised that we haven't seen anyone, maybe it's too cute, but I'm surprised we haven't seen anyone try to uh, flash in a Jin Gataxias with the uh, sword. <laughs> yeah, I'm really disappointed Yeah, about that. Maybe we'll see some Jin Gataxias in Legacy. Maybe we will. So, looks like Ink Moth Nexus is about to uh, pick up a sword, at least uh, that's my guess here. Yeah, yep. Ink Moth Nexus becomes a creature, picks up Sword of Feast and Famine, and hits Tim Landale for three poison, yeah. untapping Flores' lands, including the Ink Moth Nexus that just uh, just swung in. That's one of the craziest interactions, I feel like, with Sword of Feast and Famine really on man lands. I love it. And uh, now Edgar trying to decide what exactly he wants to do with the rest of his turn and all that m mana he has again, so... Taps a white. Taps his planes. Uh, oust your Oracle of Maldaya. So put it under that Copper Line Gorge. And now the Copper Line Gorge. <laughs> face down again on Landale's library. So again, I, I, think, I think Flores knows the power of Oracle of, Mold of Maldaya. And representing Manalik earlier uh, didn't counter it tells me he doesn't have it. Uh, now, I, I couldn't see his hand, so I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I think that's likely. So, he taps his Ink Moth Nexus for mana, and he, uh, also taps, taps the Celestial Colony to add a second Stoneforge Mystic to the board, tutoring up a Sword of War and Peace. Sword of War and Peace, we've seen that a little bit this weekend. I think right now the most popular equipment to get has been Sword of Feast and Famine, from yeah. what I could tell, and then Batter Skull. Um, yeah, Sword of War and Peace hasn't done quite as much. as really expected. Yeah. Uh, after doing that flurry of uh, action on Edgar's side, he passes the turn back to Tim. He draws his Copper Line Gorge that we all knew was there. We know now that uh, Oracle of Maldaya is the top card of Tim's library from the Alst that Edgar played. Well, I guess you answered the guy's shirt's question. I didn't see his shirt. I said, what do you know? Oh, well, it's getting a little louder in here, so I'll say Landale appears to have several Jace the Mind Sculptors in hand. Uh, two Jaces in hand, one Lotus Cobra that just was cast. Jace Bellerin draws the Oracle of Moldaya off the top, and uh, Landale adds that to the board. So, Landale goes Lotus Cobra, uh, draw off Jace, play Oracle of Moldaya, and now he's playing lands off the top of his deck. He just played an island. Uh, and now he's got a Raging Ravine on the top of his deck. So that Oracle right back in play. Edgar was unable to deal with it on the way down anyway. And at this point, Landale's getting plenty of value off of it, so a, a second oust on that oracle doesn't even seem like it matters this, at this point because you've, uh, he's, Landale's already gotten so much value off of that oracle. And now, I mean, in addition to the, the Lotus Cobra being in play, just giving uh, Landale the opportunity to cast a preordain, which is what he just did. So uh, He has a Jace Bellerin on top of his library and uh, draws that off of the preordain. So. And now on top of his library is a Misty Rainforest. So, Landale side of the board, six lands all tapped. Jace Bellerin on three counters, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think so. Lotus Cobra and Oracle of Moldaya, both untapped. Passes the turn to Edgar Flores, who has four lands in play, two of which are Ink Moth Nexuses. Uh, he's got two Stoneforge Mystics and one Sword of Feast and Famine. We know he has Sword of War and Peace in hand. He tutored it up with a Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, Flores, again, again, yeah, goes with activating the Ink Moth Nexus and equipping it with Sword of Feast and Famine. Some In for three over. poison. So Landale on, on quite a clock if he can't deal with, uh, deal with that Ink Moth Nexus holding swords. So Landale up to six poison. Um, Edgar 
All right, Landell discarded Jace Bellerin, by the way. Uh, Edgar untaps his lands and passes back. So, prepping to violin the Sword of War and Peace, I think, at this point. Uh, Landale draws for the turn, which was the Misty Rainforest we all saw, and has a uh, Halimar Depths on the top of his library, which he puts into play because of the, uh, from the Oracle of Mordaya. Uh, shows a Copperline Gorge on top of his library, uh, a Preordine, and a De Deceiver Exarch. That's, he's resolving the Halimar Depths right. at the moment. So he gets to reorder those. I love the uh, interaction with the Oracle and uh, Jace Bellerin. Yeah, so you can just take the card off the top if it's not a land? Yeah. That's a really cool interaction. It's, I mean, I actually completely forgot that this was a, this had the t Deceiver combo in it <laughs> like until just now. You what? I, I'm just watching Landale play Rug, and yeah. I'm like, I'm completely forgetting that there's a Deceiver Twin combo in this deck until it's just top deck, or not top deck, but... Uh, Halimar depths into the Deceiver Exarch. So. Well, I'm sure he's hoping for the same thing from Edgar. <laughs> that he forgot also. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just, that's, those are the some crazy interactions. Like, Jace's with Oracle of Moldiah. Either Jace seems good. So, top card is Copperline Gorge. He's going to play a second land for the turn. Puts it into play tap. Top card is Deceiver Exarch. Jace Bellerin looks like he's about to, uh, to get that card for Tim, yep. So he draws the Deceiver Exarch, revealing Preordain on top of his library. So just to uh, let you guys know, it appears that he does have the Splinter Twin in hand. So he's got the combo in hand, and he's got, right now, seven mana Final untapped, which means he's got the entire... Final call for yeah, he's got the mana to, to do the entire combo right now if, uh, if he does not choose to uh, play around any sort of disruption from Edgar. So, Edgar, end of turn, flashes in Sword of War and Peace, as we expected. Sort of kill you a lot if you don't do something about me. Sort of. God. Sort of. Hey, a birthday cake. Holy crap. Whose birthday is it? Somebody gets a spanking. <laughs> Whose birthday is it? Actually, we had uh, four judges pass their exam yesterday. Oh, cool. Awesome. Congratulations to four Dude. judges who have passed their exams. Can you get a piece of cake? Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so Landell well reading, uh, reading sort of War and Peace. Trying to see exactly how much trouble he's in. If, you know, if he is he's in dead. trouble. He's at six poison. Add two sword, give me plus five, plus five. Yeah, he's got Deceiver Exarch in his hand. Tap down whatever he equips. Oh, yeah, good point. That's why I said it. He's in trouble. Oh, yeah, he has plenty of mana. Okay, never mind. He's got seven lands. I didn't lands. see yeah. the, the four islands that were untapped over there. I just yeah. saw the three other lands. So, Edgar looks like he uh, activated an Ink Moth Nexus very slowly. He knows that uh, he's in danger of losing pretty quickly to uh, Landale's combo if if Landale has the Splinter Twin, which of course we know he does. Edgar does not know for sure. Unless he could hear me say that, which I doubt because it's very loud in here now. It's getting much louder. Yeah. Which I'm confident he could not hear me. He's on the other side of the room. So it's crazy, right now, the situation on board, both players have what looks like a potential win, like, just out of reach. Yeah. <laughs> um, the board is really, really packed with I mean, permanence. He knows he can't, Edgar knows he can't go for, you know, equipping both swords. Right. Because then he leaves himself, I mean, but then again, like, if only he exalted. Mana leak, it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> if only Noble Hierarch were around. Right, but I'm right. saying, like... If he has Mana Leak for the Splinter Twin, you're right. It doesn't matter. Because, it doesn't no, matter. I'm saying because he's got so many lands, you know? Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. Mana Leak doesn't Tim matter. Just flash an Exarch and then... And then have, pay for the Mana Leak or whatever. Yeah, pay I see for the Mana Leak. And then he can also then play Splinter Twin. To to, I mean, pay for the Mana Leak off of Splinter Twin. Yeah, I one, assume he's not even going to counter the, the Exarch. But right. Yeah, either way. Uh, Edgar does activate an Ink Moth Nexus and it equips it with Sword of War and Peace. Do we know if Tim has the uh, Splinter Twin in hand right yes, now? Yes, we do. Do you not okay. pay attention? 
<laughs> Not a I was talking to Twitter. Stop talking to Twitter. Talk to Twitter in between. Did he? Rashad thinks Edgar just passed the turn. Huh. After activating... Yeah, he did. That's why the Inkmoth Nexus is back there. Changed his mind. So he activates Inkmoth Nexus, equips it with Sword of War and Peace, changes his mind and passes the turn. So this is the end of Edgar's turn right now. Landale, considering the uh, Exarch, but a little bit afraid now after that. I guess so, he figures he might as well uh, represent... Uh, uh, what's it called? The... Not count, uh, cancel, might as well yeah. be. But, uh, Stoic rebuttal, is yeah. that what you're trying to say? So, Landale uh, decides not to play the Exarch. <coughs> Dra draws a preordain off the top, and then a flurry of lands off of uh, off of the top from his Oracle of Maldaya. Now on top of his library, is that Nature's Claim? Yes, it is. But it is uh, currently out of reach unless he activates Bellerin's draw ability. Uh, or plays preordain. That'll work too. So he draws, or he at least gets to take a look at that nature's claim and the Jace the Mind Sculptor sitting on top. Puts looks like Jace on the bottom, and nature's claim on top, which he draws. Preordain to the graveyard. Top card is another nature's claim. So Landale, looking, uh, looking in a really good position right now, being able to take out those swords. No, you know, no longer fearing the swords. Yeah, he can, he can even take out the the nexus, can he? Or is it, uh, is Nature Club a sorcerer also? I'm looking it up. Alright, uh, passes the turn back to Flores. Yeah, Nature's Club's an instant. That's what I thought. Yeah, I was gonna say, Nature's, I'm sure Nature's Club's an instant. So he could, <coughs> he doesn't have to fear the Nexuses, he doesn't have to fear the swords. Right. Edgar seems to be really waffling on his plays right now because he, he, he'll like pick up something, start to tap it, turn it backwards, pick something else up. I mean, we saw what he did last turn. So, all right, this time he says, activating Moth Nexus. Hmm. He did this last turn, didn't make a difference, <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything. In with Ink Moth, Moth Nexus. This is Nature's Claim It. All right, so Nature's Claim on one of the Ink Moth Nexuses. Right. And Edgar Gaines for a relevant life. <laughs> Edgar could be at 85 right now and it would not make a difference. Yeah. There's a Splinter Twin on top. So now Edgar knows it's available. Landale says, yeah, I want to draw that because I may not have that in my hand already. We, of course, know he does. And there's an Explorer on top of Landale's library. Yeah, you can't he can't survive a double leak on the uh, on the twin, but Edgar would have to have double leak in hand to do that, which is definitely what he's representing right now. All right, Tim's gonna play Mystic Reinforce. Now he actually will have the mana to avoid uh, to to get around double yeah. leak. So uh, that's, that's added huge. a mana from Cobra. Taps two more, three more. So there's four mana. Don't play Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> oh, he's gonna activate a uh, Raging Ravine. Huh? Not what I expected. No. I'm attacking with Raging Ravine. I guess he feels confident that he's not going to die to poison at this point, so he can start taking out the uh, guys and doing something else, and he's got the other plan to fall back on. Yeah, he's really playing playing Rug and Splinter Twin in the same deck. In fact, in the same hand. Yeah, he's got <laughs> he's, he's got it all right now sitting there, and he can do what he wants about right 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 now. So. The Raging Ravine connects for four, putting Edgar back to his starting life total. After the Nature's Claim, uh, put him up to 24. So it looked like uh, an oust for, yep. the, uh, for the Oracle of Maldaya. Again, Landale has gotten so much off of that Oracle, I don't know that it matters. 
On your table will be a sheet that has yeah, the damage has already been done with the oracle. Please find a case. Uh, Flores getting in with two Stoneforge Mystics unequipped. Notably unequipped because Edgar doesn't want to tap the mana to leave himself open to the combo. Yep. So it looks like Landale, looks like he's tapping three. May flash in a Deceiver Exarch at this point to block. Yep, that's what he's doing. Or he at least flashes it in to do something here. I don't know if he needs to block. I don't know that he needs to block either, but uh, he untaps his Raging Ravine. Taps four. He's he's blocking. Oh my goodness. He looks like he's activating Raging Ravine. Block, block. Double block, yeah. It appears that way. Take out one of the Stoneforge Mystics. Or I guess, yeah. Yep. And uh, Edgar looks like he passed the turn. Landell untapping the mountain of lands he has over there, including only one actual mountain. <laughs> Taking a look Man. at Edgar's list here. Okay, let's see what he does here. Okay, he's going to explore. Explore right into that not care, Oracle of Moldiah. Yep. Indicated by his hand gestures. Mm -hmm. You can always tell <laughs> with Edgar, just by looking at his hands, how little he cares about his opponent's play. <laughs> when that's the case. Right, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's uh, Oracle of Moldiah making a third <laughs> appearance, the same one Oracle in the deck, making a third appearance in the game, showing a Lotus Cobra on top of the deck. Looking at uh, at Edgar's list, it's it's his old list with Batter Skull and Sword of War and Peace, yep. and, and other than that, nothing right. from uh, from New Phyrexia. He cut the Sun Titan from the main deck and put it in the board. Still plays no Gideons, two Jace Beller and four Jace the Mind Sculptor in there. I know you guys have access to this as well on the uh, StarCityGames.com website. Uh, the coverage of the Orlando Open Series. The top 16 deck lists are available. So Landale looks like he's uh, chosen to what, activate his Raging Ravine, play a Lotus Cobra. Well, he, he's got he moved the rage. He has eight mana tapped right now. He played. Um, he played Oracle of Maldaya, right? Right. He just moved. Uh, uh, maybe the Raging Ravine being up there is what, what made me think it was activated. But he did, he did play an uh, Oracle of Maldaya. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, played Oracle, played Lotus Cobra. Yeah, you're right, maybe he didn't activate it. Just confused me because it was up there. I was looking at the deck list. Yeah, he played Explore. That's the other two. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks. Forgot about that, yeah. yeah. That's right, I forgot too because he yeah. explored into the Oracle. Right. So. But he can activate that uh, with the two Cobras out. He can activate the uh, Ravine at any time. So, he's going so with the equip Edgar looks like he's going to go aggro energy. now. Yeah, he's, he's trying to consider how he wants to do this because, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that about looks like what I think he felt like. You know, yeah. he probably looks exactly the way I expected him to. to to right. look or feel. I mean, this seems pretty easy for uh, for Tim. Yeah, Tim's really mm -hmm. on multiple plans right now. He's, like, I mean, he's got both wins. He's, it's like winning with infect and damage. All Tim has to do right now <laughs> is um, Nature's Claim, the Green Sword, the Pro Green Sword, mm -hmm. right? Which he's not. I mean, which obviously isn't happening right now. But like, he would have to Nature's Claim the Green Sword if he were to try to swing in or something and then block. So he doesn't get his lands on tap. Of course, you know Edgar again is playing conservatively, which is the right thing for him to do right here. So Landale now on his turn untaps those tons of lands. I, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lands on Landale side of the board. Plays a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, draws the mana leak revealed off the top of his deck, or actually he brainstorms, so he, he draws it, but he's brainstorming into it. I wonder why. So he shows a forest and deceiver exarch, so we know now he's got a uh, deceiver exarch in play. He can literally play the combo twice right now. He yeah, I'm kind of wondering why exarch. he's playing so conservatively, conservatively as well. Like at this point, just try to go off, and if you don't, you have all those other. You, you can play the, other uh, another, you can hard cast another exarch and another twin. If. You know, if Edgar has a counter spell, Edgar can't counter more than two spells right now. 
You know what I mean? And he can pay yeah. for any sort of counter spells that he might have. So I'm kind of shocked by all this. Yeah, I, I would like to ask him what he's uh, I mean, I what he's playing around. Playing conservatively, but like I mean, he, he can uh, literally win twice right now. <laughs> Possibly three times, right? <laughs> if you uh, count all the all the permanents on the board. Um, but uh, decides to go with activating the Raging Ravine, swing in, um, kind of missing the flurry of activity happening here. Was that? There were, were, yeah, Cobra traded with the. Uh, he nature's well, claimed the sword. Nature's claimed the sword, so Cobra traded with the Stone Fortress. Tectonic Edge. I didn't even see the, Tectonic uh, Edge on board. That's where, what I missed. It was it's all, under the Ink Moth. That's why I didn't see it. So. And then, uh, and then he traded with the uh, Cobra. And. Uh, that's enough to uh, take it to game three. Landale saying, I don't even need this combo that I have two copies of in my hand and a third Splitter Twin on top of my library. I'm I'll just, just beat you with Rug. I'm surprised he used the combo like four turns ago. I mean, yeah, like, I feel like... He had like the... He was like totally resilient against like... I mean, he okay, the only thing he wasn't... Uh, he didn't have an out to was double flash freeze. But if... I, mean, I don't know if Flores would be bringing in double flash freeze, you know, like... I don't know, flash freeze seems decent against Rug. There's plenty of green spells, plenty oh, against of Against Rug, yeah, I guess you're right, never mind. You're thinking, thinking against the typical Deceiver twin. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, thing, yeah. Uh, Grixis twin or something, yeah, right. I don't think flash freeze is... The any, flash freeze actually would be great there, and so that does make a lot of sense that there would be hard counters that cost two. Right, and but game. I guess the way I, I look at it is I'm like, all right, I've got a really good board position uh, right now. I've already dug dug through an entire Jace Bellerin, who also happened to have a plus two at one point. <laughs> so I've drawn six cards off of Jace Bellerin. Right. Um, and uh, now I have Jace the Mind Sculptor in play. I mean, I, he just played that this last turn, so maybe that's not what I'm... I, I shouldn't use that as an example. But he had a really good board position. Uh, Nature's Claim for Swords and Ink Moth Nexuses, which he did end up taking out one of the Ink Moth, nex ink moth Nexuses. Yeah. Um, so... As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to go combo D. Can you stop it? All right. If you stopped it, I still have a board position. Or, in this case, as it started getting later, he, he can go combo. Can you stop it? Okay, you stopped it. Combo. Can you stop it again? Okay, now I still have a uh, good board position. He went kind of backwards with it, where he's like, I have a good board position. I'm just going to try to win with what you can see, and rather than using the combo, which seems to me like uh, if you can just win... Why? Why draw it out and try to? Why try to grind it out with with what you have on board? Why not make that your backup plan when you when you have the combo? You know, if the, you know what I'm saying? Like in the position he was in, mm -hmm. maybe when he when he's looking at the deck, the twin combo is his backup plan. You know what I mean? Maybe that's considered his backup plan. But when he's got the combo in hand, why not go off? Why right. not just do it? Right. Uh, in the position he was in. Again, right. I mean, you don't just do it willy nilly. He, but I mean. It, it, like, I think Edgar I think it was right needed, to be sorry. Well, no, I mean, Edgar literally needed double flash freeze at that point to be to be able to stop the combo. Right. Like like Manalik was totally irrelevant. Uh, Manalik may have been relevant a little bit. They're saying perhaps Tim was worried about active aggression, but haven't they seen the list? Edgar's yeah, not running. Deck list. Yeah, Edgar's not running. Huh? Well, who did? Right. Right, well, the only way the Edgar was going to win was by committing more things to the board mm -hmm. and tapping out. So if Edgar doesn't do that, Tim wins. And if Edgar does do that, then he just wins. Right, I see what you're saying. Like, basically, Tim, just the Tim threat of the. Yeah, the threat of the combo kept Edgar from being able to do anything because he had to worry about protecting against the combo. So Landale says, all right, you, while you do nothing, I'm just going to beat you on board. So that makes sense. Rashad uh, adding some very sound logic to the uh, to the discussion here. Um, I guess maybe we're more about the flash, you know, and I don't mean flash in this. Yeah, you're more <laughs> I mean, flash. being flashy, you know, like, oh, Deceiver Exarch, I would have, I'm going to flash this in and play the Splinter Twin combo. You know, I want to win this way. I guess I, I'm, I'm excited to see the combo happen, so maybe that's why I'm... Um, um, here's the... Yeah, to, but here's see, the two cards. to see... Yeah, exactly. Maybe we haven't seen the Splinter Twin. Here's right, exactly. Thing. We haven't seen the combo happen. We've just seen people say, hey, look, I have it. Flores has no... No active aggression. He has no flash freezes. Oh, he has no flash... Yeah, you're right. So, uh... 
because I just looked at his list. Yeah. And, like, yeah, so, I mean, like, there literally was nothing holding Tim from just, like, ending that game. But, I mean, that's what we want to see. We want to see the next game. We don't want to see, like... I want to see the combo. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, there's that, too, but we've seen the combo at this point. I want to see the I Blood like Chief Ascension Mind Crank combo still. Let's see that in Legacy today. How about that? Yeah, Blood Chief <laughs> Mind Crank in Legacy. Let's do it. So there's Legacy today? When is that? That's right, right after this. Right after this? Well, after the finals. That's awesome. Drew Levin walking by. Speaking of Legacy. Jerry Thompson not, also. Not to discredit J Jerry from Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> but he is walking next to a Stone Master. Yeah, those guys. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, skill that just walked by this table. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of magic The skill, skill level of this table just went up by their presence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Tumble Magnet, this is just off of Twitter and, and I'm just reading it. Tumble Magnet can stop the combo for three turns, which can get you to a Jace or Bounce spell. That's, I don't even know if that's, uh, like, yeah, well, you ta tap it with Tumble Magnet. Yeah, I mean, basically, as soon as they untap, they just go off. So if your tumble magnet's still tapped, yeah, tumble magnet doesn't stop. Yeah, it slows it down very slowly, very slightly. Like that's it. Like you said, just a turn, right? So because you tap with tumble magnet, yeah. And then, uh, then when they get untapped, that's it. Well, wait a minute. During if they're during their turn, they play Splinter Twin, right? On on it, you tap their guy. Right, right. But your turn, you untap your tumble magnet, so it's available again. They untap, they tap it to. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Guy. And then, yeah. and then you tap their guy, and they're like, "Fine, I get a guy." You know, tap it to get a. Wait, they get a guy. It doesn't matter. They get a guy. They untap it again. Yeah, yeah it doesn't work. you're right. It does, you're right. Sorry, I was thinking. Well, they get to untap the tumble magnet, but that's right. Does he Those are using just ways to stop the combo on Twitter. Combust. Suggest correct ways. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, so now that is, is a good thought. Like I, it's it's a new thing. So all right. So Edgar Flores on the play leads with a colonnade and then um, turn two Seacrome Coast and a turn three Oust to uh, Landales. What was that? A, uh, was that a Lotus Cobra in play? It's already gone. Yeah. So I and uh, Flores adds a Stoneforge Mystic to the board. These guys are playing super fast. I think Combust is the best answer in the format right now because it's uncounterable and unpreventable. So Charlotte this time, Charlotte. there's a Batter Skull. So that's a, one of the new additions, one of the only new additions to Edgar Flores' blue-white list uh, from New Phyrexia. So Flores now, three, ta three tapped lands and a Stoneforge Mystics, which, which just tutored up a Batter Skull. Tim Landale with an Island and a Copperline Gorge uh, and a Scalding Tarn, which he just cracked for an Island. So I, I, I smell a Jace Bellerin. Yeah, seems about right. Smells just like any other magic card. Strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Charlotte's right. Uh, Tim should have revealed the top card of his library after drawing three with Jace. I saw that too, but, uh, you know, sometimes it, I don't think it was that relevant. Explore. No, that's wrong. No Jace Bellerin. So, explore, draw, pass the turn. No. Play uh, Mountain. Pass the turn. So, Edgar Flores now. Tim Landell has broken serve. <laughs> Taking a an extra land drop there. The, basically, that's what explore does, right? Break right. serve. You're on the you're on the draw. Suddenly, you're on the play. Based on board position and cards. So, tectonic edge for uh, for the copper line gorge from Flores and Landale gets his turn back. So, Landale doesn't was, look happy with getting that green sword. No, off. yeah, that's big because he's got a lotus cobra sitting on the top of his hand where he looked like he wanted to play it. So he's got island. It's sitting there. It's, it's sitting there like a snake sits. Uh, yeah, so he's got two, il three islands and a mountain. Uh, well, Jason Mind Sculptor right? will help, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of answers in the format. Com Combust seems like a really good one. There, we were saying this yesterday. There are a lot of answers. Here's just a couple more. Suture Priest, which we mentioned yesterday. Norn's Annex is another one that was mentioned yesterday. Um, Eurobrask, another one mentioned yesterday. But for those of you who weren't watching yesterday, That Damn Aussie gives us some of those uh, suggestions from Twitter. We weren't making fun of him there. That's Twitter his name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Charlotte, uh, 
Charlotte actually says, and I agree with this 100. percent It may have been, not, may not have been relevant, but it is the rule. You're talking about the revealed yeah, guard. Yeah, there's a yeah, chance that it can be abused if it's done repeatedly. Well, the and, judge by the table should have caught that as well, right. and uh, maybe caught it. But at the time when it happened, it was right at the end of the game. That's why I so. hate Oracle of Moldaya with Jason Mind Sculptor. It's just a, it's such a headache. Yeah. Well, like they should ban those two cards in the same deck. Shut just up kidding. about the banning. Just that. So, no, I mean, like, I don't care about Jace. I'm you don't care. You don't care about Stoneforge Mystic. Either. So, no, anyways. I, no. I do Jace got spell pierced, by the way. Uh, so, Flora's spell pierced away to Jace the Mind Sculptor. And uh, now, for his turn. Skulls uh, may get battered here. It's his turn, he did nothing. Landale just added a Scalding Tarn to the board, passed back at the end of Landale's turn. Uh, Flora's viled in a Batter Skull. And so now untaps with a Batter Skull Germ and a Stoneforge Mystic in play, alongside his two Sea Chrome Coasts and a Celestial Colonnade. Landale with an empty board, uh, non, uh, has no non-land permanence, just Scalding Tarn, Mountain, and three islands, so no green sources for Landale. Very significant in a rug deck. And a second Jace the Mind Sculptor comes down and gets Spell Pierced yet again. At least I believe it was Spell Pierced. Could have been Mana Leak. It's off the, off the table right now, or off camera. Uh, vials in. It was a Spell Pierce. He vials in sort of uh, Feast and Famine. Untaps, plays a Celestial Colonnade, and goes to equip. He's trying to decide Germ or Stone for Germ! Germ's picking up the sword. I'm going to batter you, and then I'm going to cut you. It's a lot of weaponry. So the Stoneforge Mystic in for one, like a squire, mm. and the Batter Skull Germ is a 6-6, six, six, pro black, pro green, lifelink, vigilance, uh, and Partridge in a un untaps his lands, makes Landale discard a Lotus Cobra, uh, and Edgar passes a turn with a commanding position, 30 life to Landale's 11. And a top decked Misty Rainforest probably makes him regretting ditching that Cobra. Mm -hmm really could have been significant. And there's the Misty Rainforest go. Landale, six lands and nothing else. No business. Flores obviously feels pretty good right now. Plays a Jace Bellerin. Smashes it. After, after adding a uh, Tectonic Edge to the board. Draw a card. I'm not going to give you any more cards. Or I'm not going to give you a chance to dig back into this game. No I'm going to just draw myself. So, In again, 6-6 six, six Germ. Edgar to 36 life, Landale to 4, I believe. Now he could attempt, if he had the Exarch, he could attempt the combo right here, but he's a nature's claim. The land, or the sword, and not the batter's claim. Oh, okay, so the, the, the attack didn't resolve, I'm sorry, I was... What did he, what did he, he got rid of the sword, okay. Right. So, Man. uh... The double tectonic edge, which isn't actually relevant right here. Doesn't have any basics, or any non-basics. Right. Except for the tarn, which he could force him to fetch right here. Yeah, I mean, he could force him to fetch, but... But that'll kill him. I and mean, that's what I'm saying. Like if he forces, oh, him, I see what you're saying. Like yeah. if he needs the double red to go off. Of if that's going to kill him, he's just not going to fetch. But he's also got five. He's only five left from here anyway. So there's a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt for uh, Stoneforge Mystic. We'll do it the old way. That resolves. Stoneforge Mystic dies. Batter Skull in for four, putting Landale to one life. Can no longer use that Scalding Tarn. Nope. Pass the turn. I think he actually has the egg. Does he have the Exarch in hand? I don't know if he has the Exarch. He has a twin. Jace draws a card, goes away. And Nature's Claim on the uh, Batter Skull. Huh. Just yeah, keep I mean, him alive counter, just a little bit longer. Well, if, if, the, yeah, if, if, uh, oh, Nature's Claim. Yeah, but what does he got? Spell Pierce, Mana Leak? None of that's relevant. True. Doesn't have Flash Freeze. That's right, true. So countering it's not going to do anything unless he's got multiple counters. Which, of course, could, would win him the game. There's Jace the Mind Sculptor for Edgar. After the Batter Skull went away and the Germ also went away, although it does seem to be hanging out rail birding right now. Um, 
There it is. Edgar Flores on to the finals yet again at 42 life you know at the end it. of that game. I don't even know if it may have been more than 42. Wow. Maybe it just gained more. I don't even know, but wow. Edgar 